Hello and welcome back to Pillars. So we are chasing Eotas and uh, he's going through Kaizo. And we need to, or perhaps can, just make some alliances with uh, Wana, with the Valian Trading Company, with the Deathfire Company. But before all of that, just let's just talk to Maya. So, it's to be you, Kaizo. The last great arena of this contest. If you believe that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we just have to check it out. Planting a flag in the sands of Ukaizo is a great way to hang a target on your back. I think I should just claim it for myself. Afraid of da danger all of a sudden? It set sail for Eotas, not an island. Yeah, that's true. Glad to hear that a practical opinion can still shout over the masses. I just want to know that we're doing this for the right reason. So far, I'm unconvinced. Why does... Well, I understand the Juana, but why do most, well, why do the factions care about this? I don't know. I, do they? I don't know. Even the Juana, it could be just a totally a dead island. The one thing they know about that island that everybody left. Until I see Okaizo for myself, it's a bedtime story. Let the poets hang their hopes on a dream. Rawatai's navy should be better than this. Okay. What does Ukaizo mean to you? Ukaizo has fooled everyone into sacrificing and compromising for the ultimate prize of what? Getting there first? Well, I don't care about Ukaizo. Even if we succeed, not everyone's gonna make it back to sing the tale of lost Ukaizo. Uh, Ukaizo means something different to everyone. All the more reason to get there first. Nah. Trading companies can bicker for territory. We have work to do. Couldn't be prouder to be a part of it, Captain. Thanks for letting me squawk in your ear like a she's after too much shark meat. I needed that. All right, let's be off. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> Do we wanna throw our hat in with anybody? I don't know. I don't really want to. I'm just gonna take it for myself. I'm not. I don't know who, 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 to, who to really support. And I'm, I don't really want to be the guy that just like goes with the least bad option. That's not really my style. The Huana government is just... Uh, well, obviously I want to kill one Kaza. Maybe that's bad for the Huana. <sighs> Will no one help me? Nope. Perhaps in a day or two. Nope, we don't have time to help people now. We already checked out this entire place. So, Queen's Bird, I think I'm just gonna sail out by myself. Queen's Bird, yeah, let's do that. I don't wanna go with the Royal Death Fire Company. They are very efficient at doing what they're doing, but of course, like, the Huana does have the right to, like, hey, they don't want this, so, I'm like, just because the Huana, uh, just because the Royal Deathfire Company, um, seem to be the most stable, and, uh, organized, doesn't mean, uh, they should, uh, welcome them, and, uh, they have any place here. The Huana... Uh, thing is, like, this is pretty simple. The Valiant Trading Company is just, is just not a major power, the way I see it. They are here for the money, and once the money runs out, uh, well, so, so will they go away, or I don't know. They will just stay for the money, like, they don't really give a damn. The Huana definitely gives a damn, uh, but the government doesn't really give a damn about the Huana. So, I want to go for the ending, where I overthrow uh, one Kaza with Ukaizo. You received a letter from bearing the seal of uh, the Valiant Trading Company and Flon Elette's terrible handwriting. Let's read it. Watcher, I hope this message finds you 
in good health. We have made our adjustments to the machines and are ready to make another attempt at transportation. Please make your way to the spire as soon as you're able. I believe we have it this time. Your partner in discovery. What? You kidding me? So if things had played out different, you might have grown up here. True. Good thing my parents had the sense to leave. And you'd be worrying about what the trading companies were doing, setting up down here. No offense, but I try not to live with a bunch of ifs trailing in my wake. Should I just rest? Okay, what now? Do we go and check out the teleporter now? <sighs> Spire of the Soul Seekers. Alright, let's go there. In this game, you just want to do one thing. And there's always a lot of things. Uh, they just come up. And kind of... Well... I suppose it leads you on an adventure, but still. Do we want to rest? You must gather your party before... I don't know. So, we gotta go for another teleportation. Uh, hopefully this time not to Rimgrand. Who almost killed us last time. Are we gonna teleport to Kaizo? Venturing forth. Hey there, flown Elet. Excellent timing. We're getting consistent readings, and I believe we're ready to try again. Great. That is, if you're up for it. I'm ready. Great to work, everyone. Let's get this underway. And you, just relax, but also be sure to concentrate very carefully. Not relaxing? I'm not sure how that works. Look for the next Adra healer. Once you have the connection, just step through. Once again, you feel the essence in the Adra like a physical thing beside you. This time, however, the cord of energy that tugs at you is insistent, but manageable. And through it, you can feel what Flon is describing, a connection running through the tower and beyond, where it splits in all directions. Color leeches from the world around you as you drift into the between. You feel the connection draw taut like a, a pulled rope, and then pull. Well, that could have been just said, like, the portal sucked us in. Okay. I've got sea legs and land legs, but whatever this is, uh, no good. I'll try not to vomit on you this time, Ishii. Pahuan? There's an empty socket in this panel, as if something were removed. Oi! Sorry! Rest in peace! What? This thing isn't doing the job! Drop companion? What the hell, Sorips? No, you dead. Game, what the hell? What are you doing? Right between the eyes. So all the Sarbs are dead. They just attack me. They have exceptional spears. Uh that doesn't really matter. That would be enough. Okay. And some place we can go to. Charges remaining. Oh. Also, it gives us healing. What? Healing done. Okay. Maybe you're gonna get that. Do you wanna do more healing? Versus this hurt. Thingy. Max health or more healing done? 
Whatever, let's do that. Max health is nice, but dealing, uh, doing more heals, that's pretty good. A well-built drainage canal. Though it has seen better days. Just a storage room. Did I find anything? What's up with the skipping ahead addendum? The animators have gathered their... yeah. Ooh, found a strange lever. So should we check out the door? It doesn't seem like something that can be interacted with at all. Okay, so we can go that way or this way. Oh, what? Well, <clears throat> good thing I checked that out. You must gather. All right. Where the hell are we? Aren't we supposed to be transported outside Nekataka? Elton's lair? What the hell? Didn't I murder a bunch of Sarips over here already? I'm pretty sure that this temple is the one on the Nekataka island. Well, Neka well on the island Nekataka is on. Let's look at that. Cages. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Oh, I suppose it did work. Okay, we need to get out. So we were at Nakataka. Right. It's not the time to risk our life. Teleporting. Well, at this point, like, I think most players must have killed the guys that were in here. <clears throat> so we need to go back to the Animusters now. But we also need to go to our deltas. I received an important message from Captain Ferrante. What the hell? Who knows I'm here? My dearest watcher, a god with an agenda tends to put things into perspective now more than ever. It's imperative we commandeer the floating hangman. What? A ghastly and rotting ship that haunts the death fire, manned by an undead crew, this vessel. We know about that, but. It was. It was pretty. It was brought up early on, then we didn't hear anything about it. If only Sobi may chase Aotas to Kaizo. I've called a meeting of the Consuaglo Mes Casitas. Please sail to Dunnage and join us. As faithfully as the winds will bring you. Fortune favor you, Captain Ferrante. Paho one. Uh, let's just go to back to Nekataka. And Silent Cold. Like it, it just says Nekataka, but the island doesn't have a name. Ah, right, we gotta go back to Nekataka. Do we want to talk to the pirates now? It seems like an epic getting ready for the... What? Hazano Ikaru also sent me a letter. Nah, everybody likes me now. Hmm? <clears throat> Watcher, I hope you encountered... Oh, I hope you recovered from your ordeal at Magran's Thief. Come to see me at the Imperial Command in the Brass Citadel when you return to Nakataka. The way to Kaizu lies open before us, but I require your help with the final matter. 
Yeah, but... <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I suppose this would be our reward. This would be our... <clears throat> this would be the point of uh, actually sucking up to those factions. <clears throat> But I don't like either of them. Who the hell are you? Don't let me escape. Mercenary Paladins? You guys are suicidal or what? Yeah, let's kill the other guy. Help people not hurt him? Whoa! All the Animancers are dead? What is this? Animancer's energy blade. Holy crap. <clears throat> Deals with raw damage and attacks more quickly than a standard blade. What the hell? That seems like a really good blade. But it's only fine, so. Crafting it up to superb or legendary is gonna be pretty pricey. How did that guy miss the iron golem? Whoa! He's dead now? What the shit? Behind us! Look sharp! No! Um Oh boy. You're saving some animancers. Let's press the kill everybody spell. Not much point right now. So they're pretty weak already. You're charming so many of them. You're a fighter. You need to die. I think charm is powerful, but Not sure I can. at this point the game is kind of so easy, but we don't really care. Hey, Cypher. <laughs> Knew this job with Varaten. Uh, he turns his face with some difficulty towards Maya. We did what you asked. What? Beside you, Maya, Maya's brow wrinkles with confusion. Dawning realization flattens her expression. She moves to crouch beside the dying man. With a final, shuddering gasp, the man lies still. Beneath the bloodied surface of his body, the essence of his spirit flutters free of him. A muffled ch uh, clatter draws your attention to the nearby chest. Oh, she was hiding in there? Madiko, I thought I was done for. These monstrous brutes. Look at what they have done. They've destroyed all we have worked toward for a little coin. Um, you're welcome. Agrasi, my watcher. I owe you my life. Do not think I forgot. I'm still shaking. This is a bold move, even for the Royal Deadfire Company. They are losing patience. And look at our machines. We'll clean up here. See to the wounded. You'd best get over to the offices. Let them know what happened. Uh, Maya jostles your shoulder as you make uh, to leave. Her voice lowered to a discreet murmur. One way or another, this is only going to get worse. We're thinking about. What? Am I supposed to go to the Valian Trading Company and tell them about this attack? They have nothing. That's the... 
I need to inform Director Castol. What's the point? Now, I understand that... How should I say this? Like, having a very time-sensitive main mission and, uh, and a bunch of pointless side missions could be conflicting. Like, can I really justify just screwing around, helping out the Valiant Trading Company? Especially because I don't like him. Well, we're going to Queen's Birth anyway. Whoa! It's really the way to go. I wonder how would the game react if I killed more people. Like a lot more people. <gasps> what would the companions say? Would it be okay? I'm a little bit tempted to go for that. So, are we gonna go and have a talk with the Valiant Trading Company now that we are already here? I definitely don't want to go with them or what uh really recognize the current Huana government. I'm just really hoping that we're gonna have some real choices, real decisions to make later. Because right now it just feels like, oh, you gotta go with the... Uh... Well, you don't have much choice, right? Louisville Alvari, yeah, that's not it. However, uh, what I want is also a bit naive, so... How do I really do it? At that point, just overthrowing the government and uh, establishing my will over the Juana. I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna go with the Juana. Then betray the Juana. At least to betray the Juana leadership. Watcher, at last, someone who can answer my questions. They're saying there was an attack at the Spire. I fear I'd sent you to your death. None of the Juana guards will tell us a thing, and Flaune's message is illegible. What happened? Yeah, well, the good news is I ended up somewhere in the physical world this time. The bad news is that some mercenaries tried to kill us all. Mercenaries? Madiko. I did not think these experiments would draw so much interest. I'm glad you're in one piece, Watcher. I'll have the details out to Flaune, I think. You've more than earned your reward. And my trust. Oh, and uh, perhaps you'd consider stopping by Alvari's office. I believe she'll want some assurances as to the state of the Spire. This is it? Come on! Also, we can talk with Watcher. him. What can I'll answer what I can, of course. Just uh, now then. Oh, well, I don't want to uh, forge an alliance with you. Uh, that's for damn sure. So, are we gonna forge an alliance with the Juana? I'm really conflicted. I am really conflicted. It doesn't feel right. So I'm just gonna say screw it and we just sail away. And we're gonna stop Eotas. We don't have time. We we don't oh, have sure. time for political games. 
Everybody's preparing like everything's gonna be all fine and dandy. But thing is, Apologies if Eotas is not truth. stopped, it can't be what I do. Then suppose I can forgive a friend. It's all pointless. If you're willing to help me in exchange, I mean. Well, I ain't one for knowing gods and prophecies, but I can be sharing with you the ancient pirate secret for sleeping like a babe, if that be of interest to you. Of course, I wouldn't mind a reprieve. Just for a night or a few. If you got something, tell me. Rum. Barrels of rum. Drink it till you see free of me, and you'll be sleeping through Kraken attacks. Great. Uh, we're just gonna leave. Screw this. I suppose we can also think about who could actually, because I'm feeling a little cocky right now, but realistically this is uh, not too, well, this is not too realistic. I would need the most help I can get to stop this threat, but who can help me? The Valiant Trading Company? Well, not really, the Juana, seems like the Royal Deathfire Company. Is the faction that could help me the most? I'm exactly like there's really not the time. I don't know, this is so complicated. Just because I do it without them doesn't mean they're gonna step aside when uh, there's stuff to be uh, taken. But I really don't like the rule that fire company either. So we're just gonna say screw it and go by ourselves. Let's have a drink of rum. What? You find yourself in cold, suffocating darkness. There is a familiar weight in your hand. A lantern. It sputters to life, and the world shifts into focus. A staircase spirals endlessly below you. With nowhere else to go, you start down. Not a few moments have passed before you encounter a nondescript door sitting just ajar. It's unclear what lies beyond. But then, you hear the tinkle of a bell high and sweet. Ringing in the room beyond. The sound is familiar, captivating, like the singing of stars. You step inside. A wave of blistering heat hits you. Then a sea salt wind. Divine voices boom and screech. Their words shake the platform beneath you, shake the very air around you. The gods are fighting. Ah, uh, these guys again. By the way, nice boost on the one on the left. Why are you guys inviting me again? Lay your blame elsewhere, Wodica. I won't suffer your arguments any longer. Magrin looms large before you, an accusing finger leveled at the melted visage of Wodica. Wodica screws her mouth into a sneer. You fool! If only we had attacked him when I first proposed it. Accusations drip bitter as bile from her tongue. Shut up! I would just wait until you're done. Eotas could be destroying the wheel right now and you're arguing. What's going on there? I'm just gonna yell shut up. Even the kith loses patience with you, Wudika. Andra says, amusement bubbling just beneath the surface of her words. The pallid knight looks down at you, a frown etched deep in her otherwise statue-still features. I am afraid we are not at our best. The Watchers return. Perhaps we should hear what she has to say. Helia's birds chatter anxiously among themselves, while's many eyes alight on each god in turn. We make little enough progress on our own. 
they say. A wry smile contorting their alien features. Ooh, we can roll eyes. Progress, are you planning something new? We try, but agreement eludes us. Andra's storm dark eyes swivel to meet yours. Is there nothing we can do? Helia asks. Magrin glances at the pallid knight from the corner of her eye. After a thoughtful pause, she speaks. The time has come for us to seize the power we have long left untouched and absorb our scattered children. Magrin says. Andra nods, her lure bobbing bright. Terrible though it would be, perhaps you are right. Didn't Magrin mention this once before? I did, and I was scolded like a child for my terrible audacity. A curl of steam rises from her nose. The Pallid Knight looks on, impassive. Should we be killed, we may possess the bodies of our godlike children. Or should we face a force too powerful to stand against, we can absorb their souls, granting us additional strength. You mean Palagina and Takehu? What? Yes. Thousands of their lives would be forfeit to serve the greater good. The Pallid Knight speaks with the chilly temperance possessed only by the God of Death. I'm so confused. Maybe I'm not playing this political game right. I didn't want to throw in my hat in with any of the factions at Nekataka. Now we have another tough choice ahead of us. Uh, seems like it. Just doesn't seem like any of the factions are really that concerned about uh, stopping this threat. Who's good yours? A grim but honorable sacrifice? That's horrible. They are our children. They belong to us. It is their birthright and their destiny. What kind of argument is that? But the time for that plan has long passed us by. The Pallid Knight says. Are we to keep nothing for ourselves? Not a single secret retained? Not a solitary mystery? While Magrin elbows one of Wal's floating eyes away. Aethys will lay bare our every secret soon enough. What is one or two revealed now? But we get ahead of ourselves. First, the Watcher must get to Kaizo. And that will be a trial all its own. Magrin says. Another, aren't you bored yet? Magrin smiles. Not when you continue to surprise me. The guardian of Ukaizo has stood watch over that place for millennia. It will not stand aside, not even for Barith's herald. Andra says. Helia, who had been lost in quiet, anxious conversation with her birds, breaks in. It yet lives. Of course. Our progenitors crafted it. Magrin says. A pair of Helia's finches come to join Wal's floating eye. They hover just out of Magrin's reach and swoop in to poke her when she's not looking. And the Watcher will be forced to reckon with it if she wishes to confront Aethys. The birds at last linger too long, and Magrin slaps them away. They burst into a cloud of essence then reform and fly in a screeching chorus back to Helia. This guardian is but one more thing that will fall before me. That's awfully cocky. Who's the guardian of Ukaizo? A creature crafted by the Inguithans to protect the machinery of reincarnation. It doesn't care much for visitors. Margaret oh. says, and leans casually on her broadsword. Will you divulge our every secret to the kith, Margaret? Wal shouts. Magrin shrugs. If it suits me. Go prepared, Watcher. The Guardian will not stand aside. Not even for the Herald of Barath. Helia says. That's a good point. Why won't Eltas take care of it? It is not one of Galloway's mindless beasts. It has a heart and a mind, and it will throw neither away to oppose Aethys. Andra oh. says. I see. And Aethys will not fight the creature, 
It would prove little more than a distraction for him, especially as my tsunami and Margren's volcano couldn't stop him. Andra says. Can you just get rid of it? It is its own creature, Watcher. It does not listen to us. There is another topic we have yet to address. Tell me, Watcher, where do you stand? The Pallid Knight holds up one gauntleted hand, and the other gods fall silent. I don't know. What do you think of Aeothus's scheme to destroy the wheel? The Pallid Knight asks. Can I say I'm really confused? <laughs> it's a long time coming. Kit will finally know what a bunch of frauds you all are. I don't think I understand the... Uh, everything here to really have a, a true decision here I suppose with the gods guidance we might survive what Elta's plans I don't know we can not we can what not longer count no longer count of the gods for guidance kit will have to figure this out on our own this doesn't feel like the act of caring God to me Eotas is going to destroy everything? I still don't understand what this all means. What will happen when Eotas destroys the wheel? That's a good question. The Pallid Knight spreads wide her hands. Think of the beyond as a reservoir, the in-between as storm clouds, and souls as rain. Okay. When a living thing dies, its soul enters the in-between. And when the in-between grows full, it releases souls into the beyond, where they wait to be redistributed to new bodies, new lives. I got that part. The only part is foggy to me, at least the main part, is that... Why is knowing that the gods, or the gods were actually people that made themselves immortal, uh, actually normal people that made themselves immortal a long time ago, matters? Let's continue. The wheel is the process by which souls are moved from the in-between to the beyond. From the rain cloud to the reservoir. And from the reservoir into the living world. I got it. Without the wheel to mediate the transfer and redistribution of souls, the souls of all who die remain in the in-between. And without souls to fill it, the beyond gradually empties, trapping all of the remaining souls in existence in the in-between. I got it. When the beyond is empty and the last creature on Aeora dies, that is the end of everything. It is Rimergon's future, the one he wants for us. How does that affect the gods? Soul essence sustains us. We feed off it, off the little fragments you mortal kith shed like snakeskin as you pass into your next life. Without sustenance, we starve as any mortal might. We die and leave a great silence behind. An eternal emptiness from which nothing is born. I prefer to think of it as a very long vacation. Okay. That's not. You see then that we cannot help but argue. The fate of life hangs in the balance, and we are as ever beholden to our natures. Tell us, Watcher, where do you stand? Well, it is true that I don't like you guys, but I suppose stopping the this cycle uh, is a bad thing. Seems like a bad thing to me. This doesn't feel like the act of a caring god to me. We can not longer count of the gods. The thing is, there, there are two mistakes here. We can no longer count on the gods for guidance. Kit will have to figure this out on our own. There's not much to figure out. With the gods' guidance, we might survive it, what Aeotas plans. It's long time coming. Kit will finally know what a bunch of frauds you all are. But are they really frauds? Like, I suppose it really depends on your definition. We can no longer on the count on the 
on the gods for guidance. Kit will have to figure this out on our own. I'm not really sure what I'm really going with, where I'm go going with that. That's just panicking. I don't, I don't think the gods can help with this. Perhaps you misunderstand. This is not a test you will overcome on your own. Aethys intends to change the fundamental structure of life and death. Does that not frighten you? You, Kith, who are most vulnerable? <sighs> it does, but I will not let fear rule me. Aethys loves the mortals more than any of us. He has always been their greatest champion. Margren says. He believes Kith will rise to his challenge. I am not so sure, but I look forward to watching them try. Margren says. What challenge, though? I feel like the game could have focused a little bit more on this. How did Eltas fool you all? You're the most powerful beings in the era. He found our blind spot and exploited it admirably. By the time we even had a hint of what it was he intended, it was already too late to stop him. If we still had our bodies, we could oppose him! Wodica balls her bony hands into fists and glares long at Andra. Do not lay your blame on me. We set them aside after I killed Abaddon, it is true, but you did not fight the decision then. Andra says. She turns her back on Wodica then and looks instead to the Pallid Knight. What if Aethys is right, and Kith succeed in rebuilding the wheel? What then? Andra asks. Yeah. I got that part. So, Aethys destroys the wheel, the gods die, including himself, then mankind rebuilds the wheel, and they don't have to live by the rule of the gods anymore okay mankind will not have a long time to do it though we'll learn and grow as Eotas intends it does seem extreme isn't it can't mankind have a plan before Eotas does this? Because if this was... I think it's really hard to be on board with Eotas' plan, considering how he does it. But I suppose his justification is that the gods cause a lot of suffering. And uh, this uh, loss of life that Eotas uh, is responsible for only has to happen once and the gods go away then mankind will be free uh, as they wish and I got that and thing is he had a long time a long time to think about this we'll learn and grow as Eotas intends we'll remake our world without you in it don't worry there will be there will always be a place for gods in Eora I don't know, but aren't you curious to find out? Like, that is a big gamble. Because if this fails, then everybody dies. The mortals die, the gods die, I suppose they are mortal too in, the, in, the, in this way. And that's just really, really bad. Or, who knows? It might just work out. Like, the thing is, it, it it might, it must have worked somehow before the wheel. Like, the Inguitans uh, must have had a natural cycle. And, uh, and they somehow broke it, and they become gods. But, if that artificial cycle was broken by well this wheel could the kit 
actually rebuild. We'll learn and grow as Yota's intends, we'll remake our world without it. The thing is, if, if I just simpli simplify this, that's a maybe. That's just a... I, we don't know. Like, we learn and grow as Yota's intends. If it doesn't work out, everybody dies. We'll remake our world without you in it. If it doesn't work out, everybody dies. Don't worry, there will always be a place for the gods in Eora. I don't think so. I don't know, but aren't you curious to find out? What? <laughs> I'm curious what they will say. Whilst many eyes bounce and blink in quiet delight. That would be quite amusing indeed. And what if they fail? Helia asks. Then they die. And so do we. We have to help them. Helia's voice rises. Near to panic. Are you gonna help them have a natural will? Or are you gonna help yourself? Warica drives her fist into her hand. Help them! We should finally bring them to heal! The pallid knight raises a hand and stares at Warica until she falls silent. Watcher, Aeothis yet values your counsel. The pallid knight says. The Pallid Knight's eyes bore into yours. An impassioned plea from the Hound of Aethys may still temper his actions. Confront him at Ukaizo. I'll try. The future of Kith and the gods rests on your shoulders, Watcher. So I hope that you do. The Pallid Knight's stern countenance softens. Time moves swiftly away from us now. The Pallid Knight spreads her hands before her. Go, Watcher. Do what you must. The edges of your vision begin to dim. Like a sun setting, twilight encroaches on your mind. Wait! What happens if I fail to convince Yotas of anything? You will not fail. The Pallid Knight conjures a blinding white light in her palm that swiftly grows to engulf the room. Then... The crack of thunder rends the air, and you feel the floor drop out beneath you. You come to flat on your back, staring at an all-too-familiar ceiling. Alone, once again. Bam. This really shouldn't be a tough choice, right? So, in Pillars of Eternity 1, Aotas came down to inform the kit, mankind, uh, that, uh, like the gods are mortals about about everything in Gwitten, resurrection machines Adra and whatnot and that failed uh he was stopped by Bodica oh no Magran well they they kind of worked against him like Magran and Bodica comes to mind most of all when it uh, comes to stopping Eotas uh, the first time just go up we got a lot of people on this ship and now he has a more extreme plan of just breaking the wheel and uh, hoping that mankind will uh, we'll be able to fix it before it's too late. And I don't think the first plan was too bad. If if you just tell mankind and they just chose to break the wheel and have a natural wheel, like, that's fine. Of course the gods would have intervened. And that's bad. And even right now they consider like killing a lot of people. Wow, sea shanties time? Are we hi- Okay. 
it's just really hard to get on board with his current plan. But I suppose this could be the only chance that anything will change and the gods do have the power to kill a lot of people. And actually they will have the power to kill a lot of people so actually uh, now it comes to mind that they will... Oh, will they now have power? I'm not so sure. Like it doesn't really explain it that much. It says, well, they said that they get power for uh, people dying. Returning to the in-between. But if they could have power to actually kill a lot of people after Eltos breaks the wheel, then they may not get power for that. But if they already have power and they can use that power, they can actually use that power to kill a bunch of humans. Of course, not to get power, but just out of spite and because they are mad. There is plenty of ocean to sail and many lands to explore, but what lies ahead of you dwarfs them all. Should you choose to sail on, you suspect there will be no return. Not to the death fire you have come to know. Let's go back. Before we head in, uh, let's just uh, let's just take a, a nap. I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.